You may have read this week about the British boy who was so frightened of flying that he was stranded in Dubai for more than a year. This all started back in June 2012 when Joe Thompson collapsed as he approached the departure gate. His father, Tony, described what happened. He started hyperventilating. He started, kept saying, I can't do this. He would get very tearful. He'd collapse on the floor. He would, uh, he was a mess, so much so that the, the, the cabin, the, the airline staff would saw him out before we got on and said, look, we can't have him travelling like that. Well, hypnotherapist Russell Hemmings finally got him back on a plane earlier this week. He specialises in working with people with phobias, especially phobias about flying. Um, he's on the line from Dubai. Before we chat to Russell, we've been playing some very short extracts from his self-help hypnotherapy tape. Uh, obviously, I don't want my guests to get too drowsy, but here's um, another bit nearer the end. Nothing, nobody, will ever be able to worry you or upset you in quite the same way as before. You start to feel more relaxed about yourself, more relaxed about everything. Situations that used to cause you stress will no longer stress you and you'll no longer waste nervous energy over things you cannot change. Well, Russell Hemmings, as I say, joins us on the programme. Russell, welcome to Weekend. Good morning. Tell us what you did to get Joe on that plane. Well, where do I start? Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I, I, I had three meetings with Joe. Uh, I used a combination of cognitive behavioral therapy, hypnotherapy, and coaching. I do have a background and come from a family that suffer with phobias and anxiety and panic attacks. So I grew up with it and overcame my own um, problems. So I, I, I did come from a position of insight as well. And you're quoted as saying that Joe's was the most severe case of a nervous flyer that you had seen in 20 years. Yeah, I, I would say that he was one of a handful. But he was definitely uh, off the radar the, the most. And it was transferring into other areas. That It was unfortunate that a series of events um, escalated his problem because he was... Uh, in an incident where he got trapped in a ski lift in uh, one of the uh, shopping malls in Dubai and was stranded in the air for 15 minutes. So he started to have transfer of his phobia into other areas. So it's it becoming um, poignant in uh, transport, like cars, uh, planes, and uh, anything that moves, basically. Sure. I, I want to bring my two guests in to, to talk to you in a moment. Just one more from me before I do that. What's the difference between a phobia and a very deep felt fear about something well the definition is a phobia is avoidance of a stimulus so you may feel nervous flying and that would be a fear and if you had a phobia of flying it would mean that perhaps you would avoid a flight rather than go on a holiday or you know someone's you know if you had a special um, situation like someone's wedding and it was abroad and you just you decided i can't do that then you're avoiding the stimulus and that then fits into the category of phobia patricia do you want to come in on this yeah because i recognize it absolutely, absolutely. um i did have a huge fear of flying Partly because, and, and I found the business of um, why he became afraid really interesting, because I was had a gun put to my head and somebody held me up. And I think I transferred that fear onto flying because it was something that I was going to do far less often than driving, clearly. Um, but what interested me is that you, you used um, CBT, which is cognitive, cognitive Behavioral Therapy, isn't it? Correct. And, I mean, my sorting this out kind of had to do with more sort of analytic approach of realizing what had happened and then kind of getting that narrative to be part of my narrative, if you know what I mean. And, and yeah, do you sure. find that CBT actually helps in the long term or does it help as an immediate fix? I think it's a combination of CBT and hypnotherapy. They, they both enhance the treatment and make it a, qu a quicker treatment. Um, I think rationalization of the symptoms when people experience possibly what you experience, it's mm -hmm. 14 or 15 different symptoms like difficulty in breathing, pounding heart, etc. They feel out of control and they perceive that something very bad is going to happen next, which is possibly they're going to have a heart attack, they're going to die, they're, they're going to faint, uh, and impending doom. They just want to leave the vicinity. Yes. Well, when, when in, in CBT, you rationalize those symptoms because mm -hmm. they're very similar symptoms to someone who is exercising 
exercising excessively, if you were on a running machine, you'd experience a lot of these symptoms. So it's, it's almost the body, the body telling you what to do. So in a way, you're talking to the body. Yeah, it's, I, but you're, you're talking to the mind and actually rationalising what mm-hmm. that person's experiencing. Right. So if their heart rate, rate is increasing, there's a reason for that because our primitive response, as we know it, the fight or flight response, it's really useful to have a pounding heart because it gets oxygen to the blood to allow you to run away or fight the perceived danger. Oh, yeah, I but, was I was trying, doing everything I could to get out of that car. I think I was probably very unladylike at the time. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Under- understandable under the circumstances. <laughs> yes. And if, well, well, basically, I mean, that was uh, this chance that was, you had a gun held to you had this possibly post-traumatic stress disorder as well as the uh, phobia of the flying. So there was mm. uh, post-traumatic stress and then transferal into phobia as well. So there's two possible problems there. Um, Patrick, but, I think I, I'm, I'm going to bring you in, I think, on the subject of spiders. I think, is that right? Oh, yeah. Thank you for, very much indeed. You really, you wish I hadn't said that? Indeed, yes. You can cover me in rats and snakes and everything else, but um, that particular creepy crawly is something I'd rather avoid. Um, I was wondering, I was going to ask Russell, in your mm. experience, yeah. is, are, are most phobias, do they come from the known, as in a, a horrible, nasty experience that one's had at some point in one's life, or are they sort of more about the unknown, what you think you should be afraid of or fearful of? Well, where they come from... It- Prior to uh, a man called John Watson's work, we thought it was genetic, um, going back in the 30s and 40s, and it was his work that proved that it was actually a learning. So what happens normally, phobias are established between the ages of uh, four and eight for um, simple phobias, like fears of spiders, for instance, in your case. Um, So we can copy from family members, people that we trust and love. And if there's a shock where what, what suddenly, you know, during a, a meal, you, you find your mother on the top of a chair and scream and get, get it out of the room, um, a child can look to their loved one and see that there is something to fear, and it's an education process. So you can teach someone a phobia. Once, um, so, once somebody has uh, dealt with a phobia, if that's the right expression by whatever yeah. means, yeah. How, how strong a risk is there that they will regress into the mindset that they had before? Very unlikely. Really? Once you, uh, yes, very unlikely. Um, as, as long as there's some exposure, all, all phobia work, there'll be some, you'll have to face your fear uh, either gradually or through flooding by, you know, actually like with... with um, the young man Joe that I yeah. helped recently, where we actually went on the plane. It's not. It was impractical to um, take him on planes every day until he desensitised. But I was doing. I was using hypnosis to do that, so he was visualising himself on the plane. So I desensitised yeah. that way. It was the idea of people but, regressing into the mindset they were in before. No, no. Once, once you, Joe's very unlikely to regress back to having a phobia of flying, right. uh, as long as you. Uh, get exposed to the stimulus, then once it's dealt with, it's, it's dealt, dealt with. with. It's um, not going to return. Russell, thank you very much.